I was just going to do this work and not really talk about it, but I saw some value in sort of mentioning, I don't know, the installation of exhaust manifold studs, or just studs in general. Um, sometimes it can be kind of tricky. Now, obviously, the engine's out of the car. I cleaned the mating surface uh, for the exhaust manifold gaskets clean. Looks pretty good, you know? Um, however, uh, stud installation can sometimes be kind of tricky. So these exhaust manifold studs are M7, uh, but they're damn near impossible to turn in by hand. A trick for installing these studs, since they don't have any type of drive on the end, it's just a regular threaded stud, is to uh, double nut the stud. So I have uh, two nuts, both are M7, so same thread size, obviously. These are flange nuts, and so they got like a little uh, flange on the bottom, which is what you want. I mean, you can do it without it, but this just helps spread the load between the two nuts, and we're gonna double nut. So uh, one side with the flange facing up, the other side with the flange facing down. I'm just gonna thread them on there. And then we're going to take the two nuts and jam them together. So I'm just going to hold the inside nut in place, take the outside nut, jam it up nice and tight. And then we can go and thread the new stud in. And the nice part about this is as the stud goes in, you'll feel it get tighter. But you'll hit a point where now both the nuts are threading down the stud, you'll be able to see it. At that point, you've bottomed out the stud, loosen both of the nuts, and you can thread them off by hand. And there you go, easy stud installation. Um, I always like to keep a, an array of flange nuts in the toolbox um, of you know your common metric sizes. M7 isn't super common, but of M6s, M8s, M10s, M12s, M14s because you never know when you're going to run into a situation in which you can use the double nut technique to remove a fastener. In this case, uh, you could use the same technique for removal, um, which later on, you know, being a cylinder head and this being a, an engine that I'm going to run into an inch of its life, um, you know, you never know when you have to take the head off or something like that. And it makes it much easier to service the cylinder head if you can easily remove the studs. So I'm going to go ahead and do it again. Uh, also, uh, for stud installation, I, I like to use a little bit of uh, copper anti-seize. Uh, copper anti-seize is um, it's a good preventative for like metal galling. It also make removal of the stud later on easier. And you can see the stud going in. And you'll feel when the stud gets tight and the nuts just start to spin on their own. And, you know, at that point, just a matter of taking the jam nuts off and then moving down to your next stud. And, you know, for the record, I don't really jam these two nuts that tight together. Um, you know, just tight enough that they don't spin down the thread itself on the stud. And, you know, this technique can be used for wheel studs and, and you know, any stud that you want. And, uh, you know, there's tools out there for stud installation. It's like a socket with uh, cam locks on it, but pretty pricey. And they can still mess up the threads on the stud itself. Uh, the double nut technique won't do that. So, to me, this is the safer option. And even better, you can still torque the stud if you want to. But like I said, you know, this is a, uh, uh, a time-tested technique. Even if the stud has a drive on the set uh, end of it, like a, like a hex or... I've even, saw, uh, even seen some studs that have um, e-torques on the end. Those are really good for getting the stud to thread in, but not great if you need to torque them. The double stud technique is really the best for torquing the fastener. Um, so, you know, like I said, there are special tools out there that will thread the studs in for you. It's like a socket with a cam inside of it. But, you know, you can mess up the threads with that as well. So, to me, the double nut technique is 
the simplest, easiest way to do this type of job and, uh, you know, not have to worry about damaging the fastener in any kind of way. Uh, but, yeah, I thought that was a cool little tip and trick. If you weren't aware of it, now you know. If you are aware of it, I'm sure you already know this, but uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you for the next one. Now we just got to go ahead and get, uh, let's see, 21 more of these studs in. Now, of course, the million-dollar question. To run the tubular headers or run the cast M52 manifolds. Don't know yet. Threw these on as a test fit. Just see how they lined up. Looks like these are actually built decently where the uh, O2 sensors will clear. Um, I don't know. It's kind of tempting, I suppose. But uh, we shall see.